our father and our god this morning we want to thank you because you love us we are your people and you've brought us here this morning that we may worship you and as we worship you god you also speak to us and we are thankful for your word speak to us and minister to our hearts and do not let the way we came into be the same way that we shall go home speak to us this morning and encourage our hearts this we ask in jesus name shall we have our seats in the presence of god <clears throat> it is a very good morning to be here this morning we bless the lord for being good being gracious and we are thankful that we woke up alive we are healthy we have every reason to be thankful to god i want to speak about the power of a positive attitude the power of a positive attitude you will bear with me because of the fluctuations of my voice i am trusting i will be audible the power of a positive attitude it comes a time in our lives that a decision has to be made irrespective of how risky the decision may be irrespective of how daunting the decision may be we must make decisions in life and life is a matter of decisions from the time we wake up to the time we will retire to bed decisions must be made we make decisions about our lives those are the personal decisions we make decisions about our families and we also make decisions about our communities and even national decisions at one time or another decisions must be made what is an attitude an attitude is a feeling a feeling towards something a feeling towards a person and you'll agree with me whenever we encounter something or someone there is something we feel about that person or the thing that has come near us an attitude is an opinion it is an opinion we form about a person it is an opinion we form about something and we can also say that an attitude is the way we behave towards something or someone and this is caused by the decisions that we make an attitude can be positive or negative you can form a positive or a negative feeling towards something you can also form a positive or a negative opinion over someone or over something every other day we face so many things every other day we hear a lot every other day we encounter and socialize with so many people and your attitude determines the feeling and the opinion that you form over whatever comes over your life the best gift that god has given all of us is the power to choose the best endowment to us from god is the ability to make a choice or a decision from several options that are available to us the children of israel are about to enter the promised land and God tells Moses, I want to, from the 12 tribes of Israel, you choose 12 men to go to Canaan and explore the land that I promised to your forefathers to give you as your inheritance. 
Sometimes I ask myself, wasn't God sure about the land? Sometimes I wonder within myself, if God knew Canaan, because God is a, he knows everything, why would he ask Moses to send some men to go and explore the land that God wanted to give them? And I want to say to us this morning, God wanted them to form an opinion. God wanted them to make a feeling about the land. God wanted them to make a decision about the land that God promised to give unto them. And after 40 days, the 12 men came back. One, they confirmed Canaan as indeed there. They confirmed the promise of God. They confirmed there is honey, there is milk, just like God Almighty had promised unto them. But there is something that, you know, moves my heart. Because ten people formed a negative attitude towards Canaan. Even though Canaan was there as God had said, 12 out, 10 out of 12 men, they formed a negative feeling, a negative opinion and a negative decision about the land that God had promised unto them. And they said, even though Canaan is there, even though Canaan has milk and honey, as God had said, we were not told there are giants in the land. And 10 people said we cannot face those giants. And they formed a very negative attitude towards the land. And uh, they actually even infected the whole people with their negativity about the land that God had promised unto them. An attitude is very powerful. When you form a negative attitude towards something, when you form a negative attitude towards something, someone, it takes a lot of energy, you know, even to relate and socialize with that person. When you form a negative attitude towards schooling, when you form a negative attitude towards family members, that attitude will determine what you do with them and how you relate with the significant people who are within, you know, your environment. And I wanted to ask you this morning, if God had removed them from Egypt with a lot of power, with a lot of deliverance, what were giants to God? If God had given them an excellent time as they moved towards the promised land, what were, what were giants unto God? When we form a negative attitude towards something or someone, they become giants unto us. Even relating with them and living our daily lives with them, it becomes an uphill task. How do they confirm Canaan as there, as God said, only to destroy um, the promise of God with the negative attitude that they had formed about the land? It is only the two people, Joshua and Caleb, who said our God is bigger than the giants. Our God is bigger than the big people that we found and we saw in that land of Canaan. Your attitude towards life determines what you do with your life. Your attitude towards people, your attitude towards where you go to get your daily blood, and it determines what a life will give you back. And I want to say to us that an attitude can be transferred from one person to the other one. You can affect someone with your negativity. You can ask, uh, affect someone with your positivity. And therefore, 10 people almost destroyed the whole congregation because of their negativity in their uh, attitude. If you look at verse 32 of our reading, 
The Bible says that the ten people spread a bad report about the land they had explored. And therefore, the people you walk with, the people you keep near your life, they can affect you with their attitudes and you can also do the same to the people near you. Even though the promise was real, just like God had said, two people are bringing a very bad report full of negativity. Yet their God was, um, was the almighty God. If he had dealt with the 400 years of slavery, he could also have dealt with the giants on their behalf. It is only Joshua and Caleb who came with a positive report. And they are telling the people in verse 30, in verse 30, verse 30, that let us rise up and we go into the promised land. Actually, Joshua and Caleb are telling the people, we certainly can conquer that land. We can conquer those giants. We have God with us. This is the same God who made a way into the sea. And if there are giants in the land and he promised to give us the land, then God is faithful. He was turned to his word and he will give us the land as he promised to us. An attitude has the power to motivate or to demotivate. A negative attitude demotivated the people. And a positive attitude from Joshua and Caleb is encouraging them to go to the land with God who will help them to conquer the giants that are in the land. It takes a great deal of self-awareness in order for you to control your thoughts and to build a positive mental attitude. When you have a positive mental attitude, you foster the peace of mind, you foster confidence, you foster happiness, and you ask the levels of your self-awareness also are as high because of the positivity of your attitude. And I said that an, an attitude is very contagious. And it can be transferred from one person to another one. If you keep negative people within time, they will compromise your positivity. And I wanted to ask ourselves a question this morning. How do we maintain a positive attitude in a world full of negativity? In a world full of negative vibes. In a world full of so much that can compromise our mental health and so many other things that we are blessed with by our God. How can we be positive in a negative world? How can we be positive in negative environment? Number one, mind your thoughts and your language. Fill your mind with gratitude. Fill your mind with thanksgiving. Our words, the words that we speak, they can either motivate us or demotivate us. And as we talk about an attitude this morning, God is calling upon us to mind the words that we speak. To mind the language that we use. 10 of the 12 men bring in negative language. They compromise peace, stability, and sanity of the whole congregation. Mind your tongue, even in the societies that we are living into. There is a lot to be thankful for. Life has been so challenging, but we can count our blessings one after the other one. Even though it's been too hard, daily the Lord is allowing us to wake up alive. Breathing is something enough that we can be thankful and tell God that we are thankful about it. Refuse to center on the undone. Count your blessings, however small, and you will surely find that there is enough that we can be thankful to God about. Refuse to center on what is not there. Use the little God has blessed you with. 
to cultivate an environment of gratitude and an environment of thanksgiving. The, 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 the people of Israel and the ten men, they could have been thankful that the same God who made a way into the sea would also fight the giants for them. Every other day we face giants, financial giants. You know, the crises of life that are so big, we can be thankful to God that whoever woke you this morning can also deal with those challenges and give you victory and give you something to be thankful about. The second way that we can maintain a positive attitude, deal with your past and you leave it alone. And where is the issue of the past coming in? The children of Israel, when they heard there are giants in the land, look at our reading. They are telling themselves that it is better to go back to Egypt. How do they go back to slavery? Rather than standing tall in confidence and go to the promised land and conquer it, just like God Almighty had promised unto them. Do not dwell on your past. Past is good, but you can be a prisoner of your past. How do they desire to go back to slavery? Simply because a report has come that there are giants in the land. Majority of us keep it in our past. We keep referring to Egypt. We keep referring to years that have passed by. They are saying that it is better to stay in slavery than to go to a land where there is giants. This is not right thinking. This is not a right attitude. They could have trusted God. You brought us this far. You will also deal with the challenges ahead of us. Rather than desiring to go back to the past simply because there is a challenge ahead of them. Your past could be good or bad. Unfortunately, we cannot go back to yesterday. Yesterday is gone. And I wish these people are saying, it is true there are giants in Canaan, but we want to trust God Almighty. We want to keep our faith in him. Tomorrow may be very uncertain for you. You don't know what tomorrow may come with you, but you can trust God who owns you and also owns tomorrow. Number three, mind how you react to people and things. Every day, Life presents us with a multitude of dirty tricks. And we can, we can react so much until we mess with our attitude. Every day you hear some comments that are disturbing your peace. Every day you interact with people who compromise your sanity and your stability. Please allow me to ask you, how do these people react? And it is only a report that has come. Sometimes we react too much over things and people until we compromise our own peace. They could have remained sane and stable and wait to go to the promised land and indeed encounter the giants that were there. And you know, it disturbs me that they had not gone to Canaan and the giants swallowed them. They are only reacting to imaginary giants they have not seen or not encountered. And I want to say to us, sometimes you do not have to react. Sometimes you do not have to fight back. Sometimes you do not have to throw some negative words over someone or something that has, you know, compromised you. You can remain stable, you can remain calm, so that in the calmness of your attitude, you can work on whatever has come your way. The people are reacting by desiring to go back to a situation that God has removed them. And so much that we encounter daily has the capacity to compromise us. But imagine you have the power to remain calm. You have the power to call your mind into calmness and peace. So that in that situation, you can work on the issues that could be denying you peace and stability. 
Number four, the fourth way we can maintain a positive attitude is finding, keeping, and maintaining positive people. Please allow me to say to us from the reading that we read that we tend to absorb and reflect the emotions and the attitudes of the people we spend our time with. If you're hanging around neg negative people, it is only within time they will uh, contagiously affect even your own personal attitude. If you stay with the people who complain too much and a lot of negativity about themselves and the life around them, within time you will absorb their negativity. And this is confirmed by our reading. Ten people contagiously affected the whole congregation with their negativity. And this morning, you need to mind your friends. You need to mind the people you allow in and out of your life. You may need to make some hard decisions about who you spend your time with. If someone had a contagious disease, we are actually advised to keep off them until the disease is cured. Negativity is a contagious disease. Find people who uplift you. Find people who better your quality. Find people who keep you happy, confident, and encouraged. Do your best to keep off people who pull you down, who will never see the best of you. Make enough of your time to work with people who make you a better human being. Number five, the fifth way that you can maintain a positive attitude, simplify your life. We are living in a very busy, complicated life, which sometimes makes it very difficult for us to be positive about anything. When you have too many demands and obligations, sometimes there is, no re there is little time for fun, for reflection, and even enjoying the life that we've been given to us by God. And life continues to be complicated daily. Life continues to be a challenge to majority of people. But this morning, you can make up a decision to say, as much as it is difficult, I will live within my means. I will try to bring in, you know, my budgets into the lower card so that the little that I have will be a blessing to my life and the people around me. As we enjoy the coming week, you can make a positive feeling about yourself. You can make a positive opinion about yourself and the people around you. And because of attitude is powerful, then may the Lord give us the grace to maintain a positive attitude even in a world that is full of negativity. Father in heaven, we thank you for speaking to us that the best gift you've given to us as human beings is the power to choose. We can choose to be positive. We can choose to keep it hope. We can choose to keep it confidence. Thank you for speaking to us and as we enjoy the week ahead of us, God Almighty, give us the grace to remain positive, to remain confident, and to keep off negativity because it affects what we do with our lives. Bless us, we ask in Jesus' name.